Welcome back. In the previous video, we took a look at all of the grip and lighting equipment that I use uh, on a regular basis when I'm going out to shoot an interview. So if you haven't checked that one out, I think that would be a good idea before we dive into this series of videos. So you can find a link to that here. So now that we've gotten through all that equipment, it's time to actually set up and start shooting an interview. So in this series of videos, we're going to do three different interview setups, all with different approaches to the lighting. Uh, and so let's get started. So we've made it to location uh, and we're going to try to pull out three different interview looks in this space. So the best thing to do is when you first get to location, before you unload all the equipment and just start staging it somewhere without an idea of where you're going to land, is it's a good idea to just walk through the space with the director and get a sense of what your options might be. Where can I place the camera? What's going to be the best frame? Is there enough room for my lighting equipment? Where am I going to stage monitors, etc. So it's a good idea before you junk everything up to just do a walkthrough and figure out what your options are. So being in the space and looking around, I think one thing that really stands out to me are these big windows. And I think that's something that's really gonna play well in our interview frame. So what I like to do is I use an app called Artemis. And it's basically a director's viewfinder that I can plug in uh, my camera, my sensor size, my lens choices, and that'll just give me um, an accurate representation of what I'd be looking at. And so instead of having to pull the camera out and put on different lenses, I can just walk around with this app and find what frame I want, discuss it with the director, uh, and then we've got an idea of how we can move forward. All right, so I'm gonna open the Artemis app, uh, and you can see here that I've got it preloaded with uh, my camera of choice, the C500 Mark II. I'm shooting in full frame uh, in UHD 16 by nine. And then I'm gonna be using uh, my set of Sigma primes uh, that I've got loaded in there. And so I'm able to just toggle through, you know, which lens that I wanna use. So what I'm gonna do is just take uh, my Artemis app and just start to do a walk around the space and kind of see, see what's working for me. So again, I really like utilizing these windows. Um, I think that that's something that's really nice. And in fact, also just seeing the reflection on the glass table is something that can play. So this is on a 35 millimeter. If I then just punch in and take a look at what we're looking at on the 50, you know, I think this is nice too, and it's got a little bit kind of less distractions going on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to save a picture of the 50. I'm gonna punch back out and I'm gonna save a picture of the 35. Uh, and so now let's, uh, let's take a look and see, get somebody in the chair and see what it looks like. We're gonna bring in our friend. Here he is, uh, and let's figure out where we should place this chair. So if we go back in and we look at our Artemis frame, we were looking at uh, either the 35 or the 50. So I'm gonna pull up the 35. Um, and if I look at that, I put him just in front of this table. I'm gonna look at our frame and let's see what the 50 looks like. You know, the 50 is feeling a little bit better to me. And so I think, uh, I think we're gonna live in the 50. All right, so let's get this camera in. And I'm going to generally place where we had our viewfinder. And that is looking really nice, actually. I'm just going to set up my 17 inch monitor and then we'll start to take a look at the frame and see what it is we need to do. I've just got it set wide open at an 800, 180 degree shutter. It's obviously too bright. So the first thing that I wanna do is I just wanna come in and I want to figure out what stop I'm gonna to need to be at to be able to expose for the outside. All right, that's a, that's a T11. So what I did was I stopped down one, two, three, four, five, six stops. So we're gonna to need to get six stops of light in here. I generally like to shoot my interviews around a T2, um, two, two, eight, something like that, um, because it makes it a little bit easier to keep them in focus if they're doing a lot of movement um, while still keeping the background nice and soft. To get it down to a two, I'm gonna need one, two, three, four, five stops. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add four stops of ND 
Let's actually see what it looks like here. What I could do is I can bring this down to a 400 and bring this up to a two. Um, so let's go ahead and just live in this world for now and we can, we can start to refine from there. So now that we've set our stop uh, to be able to expose for the outside, we now see what our challenges are to light for the inside. The next thing that I like to do, um, once I've got the frame set, and you can even do this if you're able to scout the location before you come in to set up, is uh, another app that I like to use is called Sunseeker. And what's great about this is this app will allow me to track the movement of the sun over a given day. Uh, so right now we're gonna do it for here and now, but I'm also able to use this as a scouting tool that if I was coming into this location, say a week before, then I'm able to plug in the date and the time that I'm gonna be here. And I, I can just see exactly what the sun is doing. So let me open this up and you can see this will show you the movement of the sun. So if I'm looking out that window, you can see that there is no trace of the sun and it's actually telling me that it's up to the right. So if I come around, now you can see what the path of the sun is. And so what this is showing me is that the sun is gonna be in this direction all day, uh, which is great. It means that we're not gonna have any direct sunlight coming in through this window. Um, to be able to, to conflict with our lighting. But what that does mean is I'm gonna have, at some point today, I'm gonna have direct sun coming in through these windows back here. So what I actually wanna do before I start to set this up is I'm just going to set uh, a big solid back here and just block those windows out so that we're able to maintain consistency with our lighting throughout the day. This is really gonna be helpful so that as the sun goes, our intensity levels inside the room aren't going up and down. The only thing that we're gonna be seeing is whatever's outside the window. Now let's start setting up our key light. And what we're gonna do for our key light in this is we've got some space. Uh, we also have a lot to contend with out the window. And so I'm gonna to wanna to have a big soft source. And the larger the source is, the softer it is, uh, the less kind of incremental fall off you're going to have. And so it doesn't feel like you've got a spotlight on your subject and then it falls off by the time you get to the, the corner of the room. So it's a really nice way to get a very natural, soft, bright source. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to be working with my Aperture 600D. Uh, I'm going to need something to contend with what's going outside the window. What I'm going to do is I'm going to effectively build a giant soft box. All right, so to build out my four by six frame that's gonna be the support basis for uh, my key light is I'm once again going to work with the Westcott Scrim Gym. Um, and I'm able just to connect the pipe to the length that I need. So there's a six foot. Uh, everything has corners as well. So I'll click a corner and a corner and then I'll just build all four sides. Okay, so here is our four by six. And instead of being vertical facing like this, what it's actually going to do is I'm going to suspend it onto my rolling stand and this will be the basis of my key light. All right, so to do this, uh, I'm gonna use a variety of grip hardware. Um, I've got some gobo heads. I've got two 40 inch C-stand arms. These are clamps, uh, part of the Westcott frame set. Uh, and these will just clamp on and it gives you a baby pin. I have the Westcott clamps on either end and then I've just built a spanner with two C-stand arms with a gobo head that is positioned right in the middle. So it's right square in the center of this four by six frame. So this whole thing is now built and braced and you can see that what I've effectively done is I've built the frame, I've got my crossbars and then I have a pin ready to go to go onto my roller stand. So now all I can do is I can lift this, I can bring my roller stand in, and I can set that right on. And as you can see, I'm able to just really roll this thing around. So what I'm gonna do is 
that's tight. I'm just gonna lift this up. What I'm gonna be working with from a fabric perspective is I am going to use a silver white material uh, to be my bounce. And so what I'm gonna do is just affix this to the back end right here. And what's great about this is that it's just Velcro, so I don't need to use a whole bunch of clamps. And then for my diffusion, uh, I'm going to use the Westcott uh, half stop grid cloth. If you wanna see a better idea of what all these different fabrics do and how they affect the quality of the light, I would really recommend checking out my ultimate bounce and diffusion test which I can link to right here. And that'll show you know, what your various uh, bounce materials can look like, what your various diffusion materials look like, and then what they look like when you combine them. So that's a great reference. Um, so for this instance, we're gonna use the, the silver white with the white side as the bounce, and we're gonna use the half stop grid cloth. Okay, so we've got this built, right? We've got our bounce and we've got our diffusion. And effectively what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mount the 600D off of the, the base um, of the rolling stand itself. And so that way the entire system is all contained to this one stand, so it's gonna be really mobile. What I'll do is I'm just gonna use a Cardellini clamp uh, and that's what's going to attach the 600D to the base of the stand. Uh, and then I'm just gonna use the included clamp um, with the attachment for the ballast. So that just fired up. Um, I haven't angled the light. I haven't direct, done any directing uh, with what this is doing. And you know, it actually is falling pretty, pretty much in the center uh, of our bounce material right now, which is great. But looking at this, you can see already just how soft and clean this light is. Also looking at this right now, the light just turned on at 29% intensity. So if I crank this all the way up, you can see what we've got to work with. Let me just turn this back down. Now that we've got the light in, uh, we've got our bounce and we've got our diffusion. The reason that I like to do this setup, I mean, I could just leave it as is, um, but I like to actually skirt the sides of this box as well. Um, it not only just helps control the spill, but any light that is bouncing and coming out of this is lost light. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put uh, two more silver whites with the white side facing in. And that way I've just got a big white soft box and all the light that's coming through is then being pumped through this grid cloth. Our box is built. Um, and as you can see, it's just a really nice soft source. What I'm gonna do is just raise this up a little bit. there. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some clothes pins and just clip these so that we've got a nice clean edge uh, and we're not getting any light leaking out of that. Uh, and that'll just help control that. Now it does take up some space. And so, you know, that's one of the caveats of working with a six by uh, as your key is it's going to take up some room in your environment. You know, what's really nice is again, with this Westcott frame system, is if I don't want it to be as deep, then I can shorten the length of that so I can keep six feet, but not have to have four feet deep. You know, I can come to two feet, something like that. Um, but these are all things that you can start to play around with. But I just love that this is a modular system that I can make work in a lot of different shooting environments. So now let's just start to wheel it around and get a sense of what it's looking like in camera. All right, so right now is it's looking just a little sidey. Um, I think I might wanna wrap that around a little bit more. So again, this is really easy to do because I'm on a roller stand, is I can just come in and do that. All right, we're getting a little bit more frontal. I might bring it around a little more.
feel like that's looking pretty good. Let me look at it from this direction. That looks nice. It looks nice and centered. So what I really like about working with the Aperture family of lights is I'm able to connect all of those through Bluetooth to either my phone or to an iPad. I am able to control all of these lights remotely, which is amazing. And so you can see here that I have all of my lights loaded in. I've got my 600D, my 300X, my 260Xs, my B7Cs, and I can actually come over into the console mode and I can see again, all of those laid out with sliders. Okay, so let me go ahead and pull up my 600D. And now I just have slider control to be able to adjust the levels of that light, which is quite handy. So now if I'm looking at my monitor, what I can do is, you know, if I'm sliding this around, this is at 100%. And I think currently that's going to be a little too bright. So I might bring this down just a little bit. And this is sitting in 76%. And so if I need to, I've got a little bit of room at the top end uh, of the light. And so if my exposure starts to shift outside, I can bring it up uh, if it obviously brightens up. Um, and then if it starts to get dark outside, then I can adjust this down. So I will oftentimes just have this iPad sitting with me at the camera. And if the clouds are coming in and out and then the exposure starts to look a little weird and it's too bright on the inside and too dark on the outside, I can just subtly adjust uh, the level of any of the lights that I have set up in the room. So this is really, really cool. Okay, so the next thing that we can start to do is figure out now what we want to do with lighting in the rest of the space. And to be perfectly honest, looking at the frame right now is I'm actually really liking where it's falling. Um, you know, I, a lot of times is I'm just doing a single light uh, for my interviews, just having a nice big broad key light and that is able to illuminate a little bit more of the room. It makes them look really flattering. You know, I'm traditionally not a big fan of, you know, edge lights and hair lights and things like that. Um, but, you know, I think now what we can do is we can start to look at the space. And I think one thing that I'm really seeing is it could be cool to try to do something uh, in this back room. You know, in some ways it's really nice because uh, the way that the light is falling, that it gets darker over here is really focusing our eye in uh, on our subject. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this 300X, I'm going to put it out uh, outside the front door, and I'm going to shine that in, uh, and we'll see what we get with that. If this is off and this is on, it just helps brighten up what's outside that window a little bit with not bringing it into the room. So this is a great use of being able to have all these different lights. And then again, by being effectively a one man band today, um, I'm able to control everything through this app. So that's really nice. Um, and then I think otherwise looking at the frame, I don't think that there's really any other lighting that I want to set. Um, I will make some refinements, but you know, for instance, one thing here is I'm noticing that we're getting a little bit of the glow, uh, that I think is reflecting off the TV coming on the side of the head here. Uh, so I could either flag that or, um, you know, or we can leave it, but you can also, if you wanted a little bit more definition and didn't want it to be as contrasty on the fill side, you know, I could bring in just a white card to fill that in. Um, and then I think the only other thing that I want to do is the shirt right in here is feeling a little bit, uh, a little bit hot. And so not hot, I should say, you know, it's, it's equal exposure all the way across the face to the shirt. And what I like to do is I kind of like to cut this down a little bit so that it focuses the, the eye up to their face, which is in an interview going to be the most important thing. So let me show you some options for that. All right. So I'm just going to bring in yet another C stand. And I'm going to bring in my Matthews Road Rags kit. I'm going to start by building both a solid and a double. Um, and then we can audition those two things and see what looks best for the look that we're after. 
Okay, so I've built up a solid and I've built up a double. Um, and basically, if you are unaware, there is a, this is a single net uh, and it's typically trimmed in green. And this is a double net that is typically trimmed in red. The single net is going to cut your light by a half a stop uh, and a double net's gonna cut it by one stop. So that's um, what the difference between those two are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to audition, come in and I cut the key light off of the shirt that you can see here. This is out and this is in. You can see how much that's affecting the shirt. And I think, and it's not affecting the face at all, right? Um, it's just changing where I'm cutting the light on his shirt. So for me, I think coming in with a, with a solid is cutting it too much. So let's take a look at a double net. And that's in and that's out. And you can see it's just a subtle shift that really just helps focus the eye up to the face. And so I think I'm going to go ahead and live with this double net. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this in a C-stand. And so I think if I'm about here, my in frame, I am in frame just a little bit. So now I'm out. So what that's doing is it's just starting to cut just a little bit into here. So it's a natural fade of that shirt. So it's details like this that are kind of important because this is the way that you can take just a broad blast with light and you can actually start to sculpt that and you can focus the eye to what's important uh, and you can create just a little kind of softer elements in the frame uh, that take it up quite a bit. All right, so now that we've got all this set up, I'm going to go ahead and sit in frame and we can see an actual person sitting there. All right, I'm gonna sit in, see what we have. And yeah, I mean, I feel like this, uh, this frame's looking really good. I just kind of tilted down a little bit to bring out some of the, to reduce my headroom, uh, panned over a little bit to frame it up a little bit better, but I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, I'm, again, just such a big fan of having a big key light like this. I think it's just a, a nice, soft, flattering way to, you know, kind of relatively quick and easy getting um, a really nice source on your subject for an interview. Okay, well, thank you so much for checking out this video. Um, I think everything turned out well. And again, I think so much about setting up an interview look is a subjective thing, right? There's probably gonna be things in here that you're gonna say, well, I don't like this, what if you did that? And that's great. You know, I think the point of this is really just to show you what options are available to you, things to look out for, uh, and then kind of take it from there and, and do what feels right to you. You know, and the other thing about setting up a look for an interview is you always need to keep in mind what is the intent of the story. What's the intent that you're trying to get across from a visual and emotional standpoint? If you haven't seen it yet, be sure to check out my video on setting the look for a film where I break down all the different things to keep in mind uh, and ways to communicate an idea that connects with what you're trying to say in the story. So there's a lot of different things that you could do in an interview setup like this. You know, we can add uh, fill on the other side, we can have you know, a rim light, we can do all these different things, but it really just comes down to what are you trying to communicate. So I hope this video was helpful and be sure to check out the other videos uh, of interview lighting setups where we look at a variety of different ways to light your subjects.